right. The Jim and Terry Show coming to you from the Hobbit Hole Studio with a special guest in the studio this morning. Introduce yourself, special guest. It's Michael Payne. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Terry and I have known each other for, uh, I don't know how many years now. It's, uh, I would say, uh, 1982. You're telling how old we 83, are, 83, so we are <laughs> dating ourselves, but I haven't seen my friend in five and a half years uh, since moving down to the east coast of uh, Atlantic Canada, originally from Grossmore National Park on the west coast of Newfoundland. Interestingly enough, I... Uh, I'm from Newfoundland, Terry's from Toronto. Uh, we met, he's from a family of nine, seven boys, two girls. I came from a family of nine, seven b- brothers, two sisters. Similar family dynamics. So we were destiny, destined to meet. So here we are again, five and a half years later, doing my first podcast with my good friend. In the Hobbit Hole studio. In the, in the chair that Jim has occupied for five years. Well, I am uh, privileged today to... <laughs> you are. You're warming it up for on him. On seat, Mr. Jim. <laughs> my, By the way, Jim, my former next-door neighbor, who uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. I speak highly of you, Jim. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, here's a cheers. This is what we usually do. Clink our mugs, if you can reach All over right. your mic stand. There's the clink, clink, and we clink, do a slurp, clink. slurp in the mic. S- slurp in the mic. <sighs> there you go. Okay, you've now been baptized into the... Church of the Hobbit Hole Studio. I love it. And uh, we're going to cover some things controversial as we would do with Jim. Yeah. Only we're going to cover things from the Michael perspective. So yeah. you offer your two cents worth and I'll just get things going. Sounds good. A recent poll just came out and said that, and this is of likely GOP supporters yeah. of the uh, Trump and the they're running their leadership campaign. So Trump is just the leader. But the poll said, and this is MSNBC published on Morning Joe this morning, 71% of Trump supporters still support Donald Trump over friends and family, over anyone else in the conservative media that they listen to, over any religious leader that is in their lives. 71% believe Trump alone speaks the truth. Wow. Wow. Is that that's telling? Are they living vicariously their lives through one man who they believe is their savior? You can save America. Uh, you know, uh, the nationalism, Trumpism. That mindset is very uh, intoxicating. It can draw people in. It can make you feel like hey, this guy speaks for me. You know, what I cannot speak for myself out in the, let's say, the so-called media. So, but that is telling. I, I'm surprised. At this point in our history, I didn't think we were there at that place. I thought, you know, Trump would go away after all that's happened with, you know, with uh, with the uh, there are a number ins- of things. insurrection. There are a number of things. Let's go back and talk about coffee house. Uh, meetings that we used to go to Tim's at Argyle Road in 48. Yes. With another good friend of ours, I, Greg. Yeah. And that. if you can go back to 2015 and Trump comes down the escalator and announces, how did you feel about Trump as he well, sort of took what, charge of the GOP? Well, I'll be honest. Back in the day, I mean, uh, early on when all that happened, you know, I, I think I was, uh, I was very curious that's a good word. Curious, I was curious about what he would what bring. What he would bring. And I think initially, I think that, you know, it, it. I don't know. There were some things that were going on in America that were, um, I mean, there were Suspect, so many things. questionable. Questionable. I mean, uh, uh, what, you, you, a, what you. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Mind you, it, it depends on what you were listening to because, right, there's different sides of the media, you know. So America is very divided in its. Uh, you know, in, it's Would you say more so now? This is 2023. By the time the election goes down, it'll be 2024. And we're talking about Trump descending the escalator in 2015. I don't think so. I, I don't think it's not great, but I think it's better now. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I'm not following it as much as I used to. Okay, so I going was, back, going, going back, back to what then. media did you cover 
Or did you follow in those years of, of Trump rising to party leadership? Well, I used to watch Fox News, uh, CNN, both. Uh, that were the two main American channels that I would uh, watch back and forth, you know. So back then, uh, did you notice any change, any difference in the media coverage? Uh, I mean, from my perspective and what I was feeling at the time, I felt that there was, it was, media was not fair uh, in some ways. So there was, you weren't getting, uh, you know, a balanced, uh, fair view of what was going on. But you listened to two yeah. pretty different views, Fox and yeah, CNN, very it's different left views. and right. Yeah, exactly. So did you find that between those two, you could find a balance and assess Trump in some kind of way that was... Um, fair? Yeah, I think so back then, yeah. I think as much as you, yeah. I think maybe uh, I felt like those two were the ones that would give you a, a, the most information about what was going on. MSNBC, uh, a little bit, but not so much for me. It was that I just didn't know the characters on MSNBC, like Morning Joe. That wasn't really aware of those guys. Uh, would you say that your knowledge of Trump then gave you some reason to be optimistic about America? Well, there was a sense of that, yes, that Trump could go in. He was a, the big disruptor, if you will, uh, to the establishment, to the, the elitism, that kind of thing. And I think there's, I think to be honest, there were a lot of Americans in middle America who felt that way, that they, their voice was not heard. Trump for them was that voice, that they could not get their voice across, whether you agree or disagree with that. So I believe, so you have to listen to that. If 71% of those people are still... Listening. Uh, listening to Trump, we have to pay attention to that. We have to give somehow give them a voice in a way or let, let them be heard. Because how do you bring everyone together? Uh, you know, we have to sort of cross those lines. That's a very uh, – uh, so, I mean, they weren't heard. So I guess going back to then, I would say, you know, that they felt that they were not heard. And maybe they still believe that they're still not being heard. Okay, well, so, let's get let's get back to two things. We'll get back to the voices not being heard or opinions not being heard, mm -hmm. Middle America not being heard, yeah. and Trump the great disruptor. Yeah, he is, was, always has been a great disruptor. But you said he was going to break, you know, the hold of elites. He represents the very thing that you just that's right. He does elites, and he does, and he is an elite. And here's the irony of that. The 71% who would still vote for Trump, most of them are either A, religious people, yeah. B, they're not middle class. They're on the bottom of the barrel America. And the irony that you would follow, Mr. Yeah. I've been bankrupt four times, <laughs> Mr. I've uh, wanted people, I wanted mm -hmm. the death sentence for mm -hmm. five black youth in New York City back in 19, I'm going to say 89. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted... Uh, Barack Obama, I didn't believe his birth certificate, so I'm going to ask right, for that. Right. I mean, lie upon lie. Lie upon and lie, yeah, for sure. Bad. Yeah. Bad upon bad. Shoveled higher and deeper. Yeah. And I tried to sound the alarm <laughs> with a little coffee group <laughs> of men's fellowship at Tim Hortons at 48 yeah. and Argyle yeah. Road and say, be careful. This is not going down well. Yeah. And that was yeah. nearly 10 yeah. years ago. That's eight yeah. years ago now. That's right. It was. And so my question for you is, what media were you listening to? You've identified Fox and CNN, both of which um, I would have probably said I was listening to both, but probably more CNN, uh, more CNN, Maybe, more yeah. MSNBC, more ABC, CBS, more American, yeah. what has now become legacy media. Uh, yeah. I would still say mainstream media is your anchor to reality. Yeah. And that is yeah. a problem. So that 71% yeah. seems anchored in something that is not real yeah it's either facebook news click like share it's uh social media yeah. groups and you maybe you're into natural health and alternative health and yeah. medicines and yeah. you will find links to trumpism on those mm -hmm. very things that are mm -hmm. supposed to make you better and feel yeah. well yeah which yeah. is ironic yeah in my exactly. opinion so <laughs> okay yeah so uh, no you're right so you so your view alarm. has changed we had different opinions obviously uh you know and uh so what changes my own inner, my own inner reflection, uh, my my own journey of discovering uh, the divisiveness of society, uh, which is also 
our own internal conflicts that we have in ourselves, right? You're uh, saying the external conflict in American culture, the culture wars. Uh, yeah, it's a, Ron DeSantis right. and his that's uh, symptomatic. Woke, that's symptomatic. That's symptomatic, right? Of a deeper issue, right? With you know, so you have uh, now you have America, you know, with a yeah. Which way will it go? There's a deep sense of nationalism uh, for a, a great many people. Uh, you know, at pride. Uh, Insular, yeah, insular uh, thinking, uh, you know, very little knowledge of the of a worldview, and that I would say, you know, and that's I think that's in, endemic of American culture. They don't have a great worldview, uh, so they're very insulated and insular, and that can be very scary, because that creates that can sort there of go. create that uh, nationalism and that pride, and so to me that's that's not good. Not good. Uh, so what I would say, uh, we have, you know, people on the left that they have strong views and they're very, and they're uh, very, uh, you know, passionate and feel what Convicted. they believe. People on the right don't so much engage their emotion and feelings and convictions in a way that's, that would attract people. No, it's they more brittle, are brittle. violent. <laughs> They usually articulate very hurtful, hateful language. Yeah, exactly. So and January sixth I mean, comes to mind. How mind. do we change that narrative? How do we get people to think, to think, you know, intelligently and respectfully? Uh, I mean, because I, I don't follow that so much anymore, but I do listen every day. I do listen in and I do check in and just see what's going on. So I am not blind to it. I'm aware of it. Uh, I mean, I don't know how we cross that divide. But I do see people that be, are becoming independents, and they're not a lot, but they're coming independents, yeah. and they don't want, they're, they're neither subscribe to the left or the right, more like say, hey, you know what, I got my own mind, so I, I'm, I'm tired of groupthink, I want to be able to think for myself. All right, this is Michael, our guest in the studio, who's talking about groupthink as the danger sign of 71% Trumper. Bye-bye for now.